Okay. Hello, OT635. My name is Alexis Rao, and then with me I have Selena McRae and Ashley Beauchamp, and today we are going to present to you about OT's distinct value and professional identity. So some learning objectives for today's course will be that you'll be able to define in your own words what is the distinct value of occupational therapy. Within this course, you'll be able to discriminate between the professional identity of OT, PT, and SLP. And then at the end of this, you get to have a little bit of fun with it, and you can create a video on Flipgrid that will describe the distinct value of OT when you're given a prompt and um, a case study, and you can rationalize why one profession would perform one aspect of patient care over another. Before we get into the content, stop and reflect on these three questions. What do you think distinct value means to the profession of occupational therapy? What does professional identity mean to you? And how do you differentiate occupational therapy, physical therapy, and speech language pathology? Amy Lamb, the Vice President of AOTA, uh, described the distinct value of OT best by saying that occupational therapy's distinct value is to improve health and quality of life through facilitating participation and engagement in occupations, the meaningful, necessary, and familiar activities of everyday life. Occupational therapy is client-centered, achieves positive outcomes, and is cost-effective. So next up, we have professional identity, which could somewhat be defined as who are we, how do we define ourselves, and what are we about? Professional identity addresses our role in the healthcare team. Being familiar and able to define your own professional identity is crucial in order to advocate and understand your role on the healthcare team. Professional identity defines each individual's profession's specific goals for the patient based on their separate scope of practices. Specifically looking at the professional identity of OT, our primary goal is to facilitate engagement in valued occupations. We do this with a variety of populations and conditions in many different settings, and we're helping them to regain function and independence. We also do this through looking at the client holistically by considering all aspects of their life. The professional identity of physical therapy is a little bit different from that of um, OT and SLP because their primary goal is to optimize the quality of life through mobility and strength. PTs use hands-on and prescribed activities. Uh, prescribed exercise activities to address things like um, patient mobility, pain levels, um, functioning, and to prevent disability. So now we're looking at the professional identity of a speech language pathologist. So their primary goal is to improve a patient's ability to communicate and or swallow among those with a variety of diagnoses. These professionals work on speech sound, speech, well, I might need SLP, speech sounds, <laughs> language, voice, fluency, literacy, social communication, and many people don't know that um, SLPs can also address aspects of cognition relating to communication. Then they also look at eating and swallowing. SLP views the patients holistically and set individualized goals. These graphics show um, some Venn diagrams of how PT, OT, and SLP overlap. So on the left, you see some of the courses that all three of us take. So because we have similar educational backgrounds, um, what we do in practice, on uh, demonstrated in the diagram on the right, you see a lot of overlap. Um, so a lot of areas of practice where you'll uh, see all three professionals are um, areas like acute care, home health, ICU slash um, NICU, uh, pediatrics and schools, geriatrics, and neurology. There are some key areas of practice that OT notes, um, and we're going to go through the distinct value across these areas within the profession. The first is working with children and, and youth. OT will take a holistic route to enhance growth and development, as well as promoting inclusive environments, working to strengthen bonds between children and their family, as well as increasing family engagement with those daily occupations and routines to improve academic play and leisure skills, as well as helping families and children to prepare for transitions within education, um, maybe transitioning to work and all of the different um, levels that come with life. The next is health and wellness. Occupational therapists educate and aid individuals in things such as pain, disease, and health management to um, help to prevent and limit hospital visits. These measures are done through means of home exercise, education on body mechanics, as well as integrating appropriate performance patterns within our daily routines. Finally, mental health. Um, the distinct value of OT is using meaningful occupations to promote adaptation, 
um, increased self-identity, social connections and social identity, as well as personal growth and development. And then continue, continuing on into other realms of the distinct value across the profession. Within the realm of productive aging, the OT's distinct value is safe performance of daily occupations at home and in the community. And then when focusing on rehabilitation and disability, the OT's goal is the use of client-centered activities, education, training, and preparatory methods to facilitate engagement in meaningful occupations to achieve positive outcomes in client satisfaction, health, and well-being. And then when looking into the work and industry realm, OTs will modify and adapt the workplace by considering the factors between the individual, the occupation, and the environment through utilization of body mechanic techniques and occupation-based activities. Related to these specific areas across the profession are settings that OTs can be found in. Um, so we're going, going to go over their specific role and value within these settings. The first is school and pediatrics. OTs will focus on the individual playing the role of the student. Um, they will work to increase partic participation in many different occupations such as social interaction, academic skills, behavioral management, um, participating in extracurriculars such as sports or other after school programs, as well as even just interacting um, at recess. OT will provide collaborative efforts with faculty and parents to give education. They'll modify environments in order to promote their success and will also collaborate with discharge planning for later outcomes such as employment, living independently, or higher level education. Um, OT's role in home health care setting, um, OTs can complete admission visits um, for patients el eligible for services. This includes things like initial assessments and um, start of care uh, comprehensive assessments. They'll primarily focus on home safety, med management, and daily management of conditions such as those with diabetes, heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and cognitive or behavioral conditions. Um, clients must have continued need for OT under Medicare to qualify for home health OTs. So within the acute care setting, the OT's role is to make patient-centered decisions based on the information provided to them. Providing recommendations for adaptive equipment and home modifications is also within the scope of practice of an acute care OT. OTs will also collaborate with others on the care team, such as PT, SOP, nursing. And then also they will find the best fit for discharge based on the patient's abilities, needs, and environment. Within the outpatient setting, the OT's goal is to regain skills necessary to engage in daily meaningful activities. To do this, an OT will teach and implement the use of adaptive equipment as well as energy conservation techniques to enable the, the client to participate in these occupations. They will also educate on different compensation strategies for things such as vision, cognition, and physical deficits. So within a skilled nursing facility, um, what you're going to do as an OT is write patient goals, really incorporating their patient, um, your patient's strengths as well as their meaningful occupations. You're going to want to develop a plan for discharge and really work on improving their self-care skills such as bathing, grooming, dressing, and educate on the use of adaptive, adaptive devices as well as recommending home modifications for when they are discharged from the facility. And you're going to want to address psychosocial concerns as well such as depression and anxiety. Um, you may also um, educate on fall prevention, proper body positioning, um, dementia management, and group therapy as well. So some questions to reflect on OT's role across the various settings that OTs are able to practice in. Some things to think about would be, what other less common settings can OTs practice in? What role does an OT play in all of these settings regardless of the population or condition? And then also, what is the main role and distinct value of OT? As we're wrapping up, here are some key points to remember from the content. OT has a very distinct professional identity, but there's a lot of gray area when considering the, the roles of PT and SLP within the same settings. Because of this gray area, it's very important to advocate for OT in our role on the healthcare team. Being able to define and understand the role of OT in each professional setting allows you to further advocate for your role on this healthcare team. So now we have a little case study example for you. Um, so Gertie is admitted to the hospital after experiencing a cerebral vascular accident, also called a CVA or a stroke. 
and Gertie will receive services from the rehab team to include OT, PT, and SLP. When the rehab team meets to discuss Gertie's plan of care, the team is in disagreement over who will perform what aspects of care. The PT argues that they should be the profession to help the patient to functionally mobilize to the toilet. The OT says that they are responsible for all toileting, proper gait, and that they should also perform a swallow evaluation since eating is an ADL. SLP points out that they should do the swallow evaluation and that they should make the recommendation for appropriate adaptive equipment for feeding. So our question to you is, what professional should be responsible for all these aspects of Gertie's care? So to break this down a little bit, as an example, so the PT argues that they should be the profession that helps the patient to functionally mobilize to the toilet. While ADLs do fall within the professional role of PTs, whether or not they're responsible for them depends on the needs of the patient and whether there's an OT available or not. The OT says that they are responsible for all toileting, proper gait, and that they should also perform a swallow eval since eating is an ADL. While these aspects do fall within the profession and the role of OT, the swallow evaluation is typically performed if there is no SLP available in the setting. The speech language pathologist points out that they should do the swallow eval and that they should make the recommendations for appropriate adaptive equipment for feeding. While the SLP should perform the swallow evaluation in this setting, they should also work with the OT in order to identify adaptive equipment that is appropriate for Gertie. So now looking at case study two, which you will do your flip grid response on, Nelson has sustained a traumatic brain injury or TBI several months ago. He has recently been discharged home and is receiving home health care services from OT, PT, and SLP. He wants to be able to throw football with his kids, but cannot due to right upper extremity weakness. He also displays facial drooping, which has resulted in difficulty speaking. The OT has been working strictly on strengthening his right upper extremity, which frustrates the PT. The OT is frustrated with the PT because they have begun to modify footballs for one-handed throwing to facilitate participation in IADLs. The SLP is frustrated because the OT has been working on communication skills with the patient. Nelson just wants his life to return to normal and is becoming increasingly frustrated with his therapy team. So your assignment um, for Flipgrid is to review case study two and in your own words begin describing what the distinct value of OT is and then based on the case study what would be the designated roles for OT, PT, and SLP in this scenario. So you're going to post your response as a Flipgrid video by following the link and joining the class. Um, and you can do this right from your laptop and then once you have uh, posted your submission you are required to respond to at least one peer's Flipgrid video. Here are references in case you're interested in any of the information that we talked about today. And um, once you're done with your Flipgrid, please complete the post test as well as the um, instructor evaluation.